Hey guys, I wanted to send you out a quick review for our exam that's this coming Monday. And so I'm going to use that neuro review PowerPoint and just kind of go through each of the subtypes or subtopics there and what you might want to look at. So the first thing on the list is headaches, knowing the difference between a headache and a migraine, really looking at those symptoms and the triggers. Um, medications that we might use to treat migraines, you know, one of them might be a beta blocker. We may have some others that we use also. So looking at the meds that we use to treat migraines, not just what we prescribe, but maybe some of those side effects related to those medications, things to watch for. Seizures and epilepsy. I, this picture is really funny. Phases of a tonic-clonic seizure. Um, we do need to go back and review the different types of seizures. Uh, what is the priority during any seizure that we're dealing with? And then a really good med review would be to go on to Farm Aid Easy on ATI and look through and listen through the seizure section and epilepsy section there. So the next one to look at is meningitis. The first thing to discuss on that is testing. Um, how do we know that they have meningitis? And then risk factors that lead to meningitis. How do we treat it? Do we actually need to put them in isolation? What's the rule there? And then of course, a lot of our symptoms are related to increased intracranial pressure because of the swelling, um, because of the infection. And so recognizing those signs and symptoms. And if our patient begins to deteriorate, deteriorate, we might see them get really restless, a change in their LOC, and how would we intervene with that? We spent quite a bit of time on Parkinson's in class, and so you guys should be pretty uh, ready for that topic, but just in preparation, some of your focus is going to be looking at the complications of Parkinson's disease. One of the things you could focus on is aspiration pneumonia, but then also there's a lot of other kind of safety considerations to look at with that also. Something else to look at there would be medications that need to be prescribed. Back pain, now this is an image of a back surgery and it looks really extensive. And so we know that when this patient gets out of surgery that they're gonna be in quite a bit of pain. And so with back pain, we wanna really focus on prevention of back pain and then with the surgery looking at complications and lots of education. So spinal cord injury is another topic that we discussed quite a bit and you can see according to this picture when we look at um, areas below that sever there's going to be paralysis there. Injuries higher than C4 affect the respiratory muscles and all four extremities. So the higher the injury the greater loss of function and a lot of our spinal cord injury patients have a real issue with temperature regulation. Um, the other things that we want to look at here are additional complications, you know, like autonomic dysreflexia, spinal shock. And then in the rehabilitation phase or the healing phase, we have to look at bowel and bladder training, um, how we work with physical therapy and occupational therapy, um, devices that they might be uh, wearing, like a halo, how to provide some education on that. And then acutely, to kind of backpedal a little bit, what type of meds do we use during the acute phase of a spinal cord injury? Multiple sclerosis is another focus here, and we are going to focus mostly on medications and the signs and symptoms of this disorder. Um, and when we talk about signs and symptoms, it's going to be which ones are going to put our patient at a safety risk, you know, things like that. ALS, I know your book doesn't focus on it much, but it is a topic that I added in. And so the main issue that we see with ALS is the respiratory system being affected. And so the biggest focus there is going to be looking at breathing and respiratory system. Guillain-Barre syndrome, um, really looking at risk factors. You know, we know it might be autoimmune. We know it might be associated with immunizations or some sort of respiratory infection. I also want you to look at how it progresses, not just over hours to days, but how it ascends bilaterally up the feet and then what the main issues are as it ascends up the body. 
Myasthenia gravis, uh, we did talk about this some as well, and we talked about those symptoms of difficulty swallowing, unsteady walking. We didn't talk too much about the double vision, but we know that all of the myasthenia gravis stuff tends to start more in the face and the neck. And so I want you guys to kind of focus on what are those nursing goals? What are those things that we're trying to prevent um, from going wrong with a patient with myasthenia gravis? Okay, so now we're kind of towards the end here. Uh, TIA, we know that this is a transient attack and that they have all those signs and symptoms of a stroke, but it's not a full-fledged stroke. Um, I want you to focus a little bit on how do we treat these, and it's more of a preventative, but then there are some uh, surgical preventions that are surgical interventions that we will also implement sometimes there as well and then the type of education you might provide to a patient who's experienced a TIA. Last but definitely not least is stroke, and this is a fairly large concept map. You might wanna pause the video and kind of go through that to make sure you're really understanding the differences there between the different types of stroke. Um, the fact that anticoagulants put our patient at risk for stroke, and we know we put a lot of patients on those as well. I do want you to take a look at the different types of aphasia, um, expressive versus receptive, really knowing the difference between those two. Um, of course, one of the biggest issues that we have is airway and swallowing issues, so kind of looking over that again. Rehabilitation um, topics, you know, within our patients that have a stroke, you know, really looking at neglect syndrome and assistive devices. Um, as they progress through rehabilitation, we may notice some differences in their intellectual level. We may also notice some differences in their emotional liability. Um, TPA, of course, you're going to need to know about TPA, and then the signs and symptoms of increased ICP. All right, guys, so that is just a thorough review of the bigger topics within this exam. And so, Best of luck studying. I hope you're having a great day at clinical, and I will see you on Monday.